Well, you damn <laughs> gum government, you sorry <laughs> so and so's. You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. Well, you damn gum. Good morning, Muskegon, to all of you out there in radio, podcast, iHeart Radio, and Computer Land. This is Ian Muskegon, and I'm Jim Riley here in Muskegon's Clear Channel Studios. With my friend and engineer, the legendary Oscar Osbo, the man who put the O in radio. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, we, <laughs> we found out about that a little bit ago, and it just, Oscar, you did. There would, it used to be Radii, and now it's radio, <laughs> so all because of Oscar. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, and we appreciate you being here. And back with us again, uh, one of our regulars, columnist employer probably despised employer by certain uh, folks uh, right. in 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 the public sector who don't really like those private employers but, and now author Tracy author. Lorenz good morning Tracy I put the rad in radio there you well, <laughs> so between us he's the i you're the o and I'm yeah. the rad we got okay you're rad we got well all spelled out I, I'm, I'm looking for <laughs> any any of those uh, in in the spelling of your name and it's not there but that's okay Hey, um, we've in addition to this phenomenally exciting morning crew here, we do have coming in in the nine o'clock hour uh, a return of another uh, special guest that we've had before. But as we've got the election uh, in November coming up, uh, we'll have Scott Hagerstrom, who is the state director of Americans for Prosperity (AFP), and uh, we're going to take another look at the bridge. Of course, uh, you you can't turn on television without seeing multiple ads, uh, pro and uh, mostly against the bridge. Uh, we're going to talk about that um, constitutional amendment, very uh, important constitutional amendment, and uh, some of the other amendments that we're going to be voting on uh, coming up in November. And uh, I always like to say, because it's true and it makes me feel good, that we are Muskegon's number one rated political talk radio show, but we just got some uh, Arbitron ratings out, and uh, we have uh, in the neighborhood of about a thousand or so, it's a, a little more than a thousand um, households in Muskegon County. Um, that are listening to the show just purely on on a listening basis, not wow. including uh, you know downloading or going to i uh, uh, iHeart Radio or any of the others. And um, uh, I think the average uh, household in in a thousand uh, in, in 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 yeah, well in in our wow. uh, and we are we are number one in our time slot. But I think what's important is that's about about uh, I think uh, something in the neighborhood of three to four people per household in Muskegon County. So that puts us at, let's just say, 3,500 people are actually listening or at least being exposed to it. Uh, and <laughs> exposed. Exposed. And That's we will have an inoculation. <laughs> you can be sure yeah. that, that the uh, certain <laughs> greens, you can sign up for your shots. That's right. So, well, certain parts of the media would prefer to, to inoculate the, the rest. Uh, certainly the county commissioners, I'm sure, as a group, would like to inoculate uh, Muskegon uh, uh, the residents and certainly voters from listening to us. But... Um, <laughs> We had in this most recent, uh, very, very important here, uh, poor Oscar's dying. Yeah, died over here. <laughs> we're going to have to bring in uh, I w- EMTs. I was exposed. You were, <laughs> I know, he did not get inoculated in time. But uh. we had in this most important August primary election, we had about 21,000 voters. So we have uh, uh, about 10 to 15 percent, certainly people who listen to this show, are voters. And uh, we do have, we do have power, and uh, and, and they're good uh, looking, and uh, and we are <laughs> well, we're good looking for radio, I suppose, and, and no, we the, thank you all, listeners. you listeners, and the word is getting out, and and really, um, we are the only radio show that that not only uh, has political interaction where where you can uh, where we try to ask some tough questions, um, but you can call in, and we still have the call in number, which is two three one eight three zero three one zero nine, and I heard on TV we're at we're at uh, five now, we have five viewers, so. You know, wow. On the yeah, TV show. At least, yeah. At least, well, yeah. Um, they probably I'm, invite all their friends, so like 20 <laughs> friends. Right. So they tell their friends, a, a yeah. Hundred. Maybe, we, yeah. Maybe we get 20. Well, you know, I, I, I do think, I, I'm pretty pleased, again, because this is AM radio. This is morning, uh, Sunday morning. Um, and uh, and I do know that we get some fairly nice hits from the uh, from the uh, the blog that we have and, of course, the iHeartRadio. Uh, and and I think what's really important too is we have we have two blogs and and for those of you I think I'm sure most of you are aware of what a blog is but it's a it's very much like a website it's just a little easier to use and uh, we have the ionmuskegon.com blog which for the most part I'm just leaving to uh, uh, videos of the show and, and a few other things maybe a little pro, uh, show prep but mostly I'm depending on muskegonpundit.com for show prep and and other. Uh, articles that I've seen on the internet that are of interest to me, um, and I try to focus as much as I can on the uh, 
uh, on Muskegon County in Michigan items. But um, but we are trying to bring to the listeners and to the voters uh, and, and certainly to business owners in, in Muskegon County information that they might not otherwise have available to them. So uh, that's that's our, our quest. Um, uh, we know that, unfortunately, now that the Muskegon Chronicle is delivery down to three days a week and certainly cut back, uh, I'm sitting with uh, someone who used to provide, I think, the best column right. uh, in, in the newspaper. And, and, pariah. Uh, but you are still, yeah, you are a pariah. I should have put that in there. You know, you are a, uh, an employer, a columnist, author, and pariah, and Tracy pariah. Lorenz. There we go. Anyway, so... Hey, on this day in history, uh, interestingly, not a whole lot uh, of really compelling uh, things happened on, on this day. But uh, three that I thought were interesting. Uh, one, in 1951, the first transcontinental telecast was received on the West Coast, a show called uh, Crusade for Freedom. So you can, <laughs> you can imagine that that show would not be on television in, in the United States. It had today. less than a thousand listeners. Well, it probably did. <laughs> well, it, you know, the, but the term crusade is, is so offensive now to so many Americans, and, and freedom uh, equally so um, to, to a, a certain group. A Muskegon Catholic crusader. And, and there we go. And, and that uh, at some point I, I see that the uh, there are leaders in uh, the Arab Spring nation of Egypt who want the United Nations to pass a worldwide law banning um, negative comments about uh, the Prophet Muhammad. So um, I'm sure if, if they are able to get that power, that they will go, uh, they'll dip their hands into Muskegon County and go after those nasty, evil um, Muskegon Catholic Central uh, Crusaders, too. So uh, who knows? We're who knows what will happen? But anyway, a couple of other things happened, interestingly, today. Oh, well, the reason I bring up the, uh, the, uh, the 1951 transcontinental telecast was that wasn't done by uh, Barry Obama. Uh, he didn't make that happen. Uh, CBS radio made it happen. Al Gore. And a lot of hard people made it happen. And uh, Al Gore was not involved at all, although who knows, he might very well have taken credit for it at some point. But a couple of other things. Um, th- th- I find this is, this is a flash in the pan, something that was ubiquitous, which is a term that uh, every time somebody says it on, on uh, ABC News or NBC News or one of the major news channels, for the next week, ubiquitous is the ubiquitous word. But um, ubiquitous means something that's said often, seen often. Uh, in 1930, flashbulbs for cameras were first patented. And, of course, now they're gone. We don't right. see that, you know, there's a whole generation that... I still use them. Well, well, I'm sure that certain people, geezers like, uh, like Tracy I Lorenz... I used to flash cubes. The yeah. four little the flash balls. Oh, yeah, little four. I remember I had those. Oh, those are great. Yeah, those yeah, are great. Yeah. And uh, but but the concept of flash bulb is is come and gone. 1930 to probably what about 1999. Yeah. See, you don't even need the, the the Polaroid camera anymore. The uh, no. the the instant camera. Yeah, because Polaroids you, were yeah. ubiquitous yeah. at one point. Yeah. <laughs> the internet. But this <laughs> this gets me given given the the media coverage of what's happened. Uh, uh, this, these horrors that have happened and are continuing to happen at this moment um, throughout the Arab world, the Arab Spring, and into Europe also. Um, in 1779, one of my all-time heroes as a kid, the American warship Bonhomie Richard, uh, Bonhomie Richard, uh, commanded by John Paul Jones, uh, defeated the uh, Her Majesty's ship Serapis, and of course the famous phrase "I have not yet begun to fight." Um, something that was quite stirring. You know, it was uh, bravery. It was America. It was uh, victory. Uh, words that you really don't expect to hear under the current administration of uh, Barack Obama, Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, and the like. Um, there were times when America was both respected and feared, and uh, these, uh, sadly, uh, the times have changed to the point where we are neither respected nor feared by apparently anybody. Um, hmm. And uh, and Tracy's got all of my show prep in front of him, thinking that it's permanent gift. <laughs> <laughs> That's my show I'm gonna, brain. I'm going to shuffle the pages up now. <laughs> hey, a um, couple of other things. You, you mentioned it this morning, the Michigan sing-along, uh, which, which if you haven't seen it, uh, <laughs> you may never be able to. Um, it was put together by the, uh, the State of Michigan um, Tourism d- d- Department or whatever. Jump on it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I was in the Muskegon version and the Grand Haven version. I think they had to go to 50 cities in five days and film this and choreograph it, put it all together and stick oh, yeah, it on the air. Yeah, yeah. And what was the and song they that they used? It. 
Uh, all I remember was our part. We had to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, we'll call it the whoa, whoa yeah, song. That, anyway, it was a really cool video, and it was intended to go to be played uh, nationally. And I, I, I imagine it went on some TVs, but certainly it was uh, on on uh, YouTube and all. And uh, it was really, really great. Uh, Muskegon looked, I thought, fantastic. The, whoever was involved in setting it up, it was out at the roundabout the, downtown. The, 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 by the front, though, there. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see bits of it, but i never seen the full video. Well, it was catchy top to bottom. It was. And uh, uh, apparently this morning now the entire uh, YouTube has been pulled because there's a question about uh, rights to, to the music. Uh, mm-hmm. Looks like the folks who did put it together, uh, I, I'm sure they did their best to, to be uh, um, sure comply to whatever the laws were. That's what they do. But they, they also did the one in Grand Rapids to American Pie, the world record holder. Right, Just right. Fabulous work. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's anyway. These things are really cool, and unfortunately, uh, the legal system is such. Uh, although maybe this is a uh, really, if somebody does own the rights to the music, you, you've got to compensate them. But uh, it is off the air this morning. But, but usually, they, they do compensate on on, right. on uh, YouTube. But usually, always goes to Amazon dot com as far as where you can buy the song or all that good stuff. It's 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 very it's very strange. It was it was like a bunch of songs because you know I do that reminiscing thing. And there's a bunch of songs that I'll put up there, and the only time they, they yanked anything I did was a Garth Brooks tune. So it has to do with something with the legal rights of the artist or of that, particular of that song. company or whatever. Yeah, but and, yeah, and, really and, and again, it's, it's, it's set up to make sense. But, uh, but, it's set up to make sense. Well, no, I, I do. I, you know, if you're, if you're going to write a, 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 a song, you ought to be compensated for it. And right. Uh, right. So anyway, I just thought if, if it does come back again, uh, I think just Google Michigan Michigan sing along and that'll get you right to it. Mm. Hey, um, a couple of other things we just had in in Muskegon County, and you know, one of the things I always try to tell people is that what happens here, and this is why you, you can listen. I hope you can listen to this show any place in the country because it's happening where you live. Um, although uh, we're going to talk about uh, the comparison between Muskegon County and Ottawa County, it's happening much less so there. But the Muskegon um, uh, Board of Public Works which is headed, uh, the chairman of that is uh, County Commissioner Marv Engel, who was up for uh, re-election come November. Um, they just passed a, a 6% overall increase in the cost of the wastewater, uh, the, the wholesale rate. Uh, my understanding of it is that it had to be done. It probably we need to get um, even more uh, in, uh, more increases in order to, to, to pay what's necessary to pay the bonds that are out there. My problem with this is that this county board, just like so many governmental uh, organizations throughout our country, almost are entirely reactive. Um, here we are. Uh, how long has Sappy been gone? How long have we known that Sappy is going to be leaving? And we have absolutely uh, nothing. You know, we didn't increase rates in advance with the idea that we could, uh, you know, put a little slush fund away to help us through the tough times. We are we are waiting till the last day till till Simon Legree is out the outside the, the the front door. You can you have to Google Simon Legree if you're young, but he's out. You know, he's he's at the front door demanding payment, and and we have a situation coming up where um, the largest taxpayer in the county, which is the the uh, Cobb plant, Consumers Power. Um, Consumers Energy, I guess now, um, is going to be closing soon. Hmm. And uh, there's nobody <laughs> – I know that, that Mayor, uh, Mayor Warmington, uh, Steve Warmington, uh, really uh, was, was at least <clears throat> talking a lot about it, saying we've got to make changes here because we're going to lose all this tax revenue. In all of the times that I've been to the county uh, commission meetings, I've never heard a word about what are we going um, to do. I never heard they were leaving. Oh yeah, they're leaving. Um, uh, this this is a result of the uh, EPA uh, waving yeah. the magic uh, EPA wand um, and and telling um, uh, dozens, uh, at least dozens, um, of uh, coal fired plants that you're not going to uh, under the new rules, which were never voted for by the way by anybody elected. The new rules promulgated by the Obama administration. Um, that they have to shut down, and I'll and I'll read something from this. This is uh, this is a uh, a blogger, but this is from somebody who is on, uh, inside in the electrical generation world. The headline is um, "Electricity Rates Would Necessarily Skyrocket," which 
is kind of a familiar phrase because um, candidate Obama, Senator Obama, said this uh, very <laughs> publicly numerous times, but it's on, on YouTube even, uh, where he said, under my plan, uh, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. And, of course, the biggest users of electricity, uh, other than the rest of us here you know, who use it at home, um, are businesses, employers. Mm-hmm. And if, in fact, you like employers, you really don't want the cost of employers to go up. But listen to this. I'll just read a couple of paragraphs said, look, folks, I'm in this field. I've been in for more than 30 years, losing 36 million or 36,000 megawatts of the most coal efficient generation capacity in the United States is a disaster. You have no idea how bad the increases are going to be. They will be disastrous to the individual energy com- consumers and apocalyptic to large users, those who create jobs. I shudder to think of what this is going to do to the grid reliability as well. This is a, an important thing that's not really been talked about. A lot of those coal plants help support the grid during disruptions. They regularly provide both energy and megavolt ampere reactive, doesn't matter, but uh, that keep the grid from collapsing when large loads are added or lost. In other words, if you shrink down the number to, to a whole bunch of more efficient, uh, you know, the large ones, when one of those goes down, you don't have all of the, the backup power. But he goes on, losing those stabilizers will make it very hard to hold the grid. I pity the load dispatchers. Trust me, people, this is a very big, very bad thing that is happening as a direct result of Barack Obama's war on coal. So It's going to happen, what, 12-12-12? Um, <laughs> uh, actually, I believe it's going to happen at the end of 2013, so a little more than about a year and a half. And, oh, okay. and this is a done wow. deal. Unless Now, it, it may very well be that, that if uh, 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 Governor Romney gets elected uh, gov- uh, president, then he may pull that back. But um, we've got a few other things to talk about, as we always do, and we will be back after this break. Make a run for the border. Taco Bell is waiting to cook for you. Delicious tacos, nachos, chalupas, gorditas, quesadillas, or try their famous grilled stuffed burrito for only $1.99. Make it a combo for only $3.49. Their large variety includes specialties, combos, supreme salads, and kids' meals. Taco Bell, the best fast food north of the border. So walk in or drive up. Visit all of the Taco Bells in West Michigan. Open Sunday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Taco Bells open Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 1 a.m. Call Bad Boys Bell Bonds. Open 24-7, 365 days a year. Agents statewide and nationwide. We do 10% bonds for less. Call toll-free 866-728-6400. And remember, if we can't get you out, you ain't getting out. Payment plans available. Call now, 866-728-6400. Classic Computer Sales and Service. They buy, sell, trade, repair, and upgrade. New custom-built computers, three-year guarantee, excludes laptops. Or your computer tuned up with more memory, hard drive, or maybe a DVD burner installed for $49.95. Need cables, power supply, or get the computer built the way you want it. You can do it at Classic Computer in their new location, 1921 Apple Avenue, Suite B. Call 773-5957. Classic Computer with hometown quality service. Your dad gum government, you sorry so and so's. You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. Well, you dad gum, dad gum. Dad gum government. Well, we have, uh, you know. Government wouldn't be dad gum if it didn't take our money and then really not deliver on what it had promised. Uh, and and he, we have a situation going on here in Muskegon County where there's a lot of talk about. Um, uh, blue is the new uh, um, oil, or no, water is the new oil, and the, this blue economy that somehow is going to create jobs and, and ultimately uh, tax revenues that will pay off this massive debt that we have here in Muskegon County. And um, I, I keep talking about Muskegon County's debt, and I would really uh, refer you to either Muskegon Comment, MuskegonPundit.com, or IonMuskegon.com, because uh, one of the county commissioners, I've talked about this before, but I, I, this is too critically important. One of the, one of the gentlemen who was running uh, as a candidate for county commissioner, an extraordinarily bright young guy, uh, Mark Molitor, who's running against um, current uh, sitting county commissioner uh, Ben Cross in the, uh, what, I guess you call it, West Muskegon District. Um, but he put together a comparison of Muskegon County versus Ottawa County. 
Uh, Ottawa County is about 50% larger in terms of, and we've talked about this before, but it's about 50% larger in population. It's uh, quite a bit larger in, in overall size. Uh, Muskegon pa- County has um, about 1,400 full-time employees. Ottawa County has about 900. Um, but here's where it gets really, really nasty. On debt per resident, take the debt divided by the residents. Uh, Ottawa County has $87 worth of debt per resident in the county. Wow. Muskegon. I can pay that off. Muskegon My County part. has $905 of debt per resident. Now, remember, we're smaller than they are, <laughs> significantly smaller, and we have almost ten, well, over 10 times the debt per resident. This is, in other words, these are bonds that have been issued. Here are the numbers. Well, this, these are the bonds that have been issued. Here are the numbers for their pension, and this is something I've been um, uh, railing about for the entire time that, that this show has been on the air. This is the promised money that we are underfunded in our pension for county employees. These are pension and, and um, health benefits. Ottawa County, much larger uh, county, although with fewer employees, they're unfunded, underfunded. In other words, if you write a check, that all this brings them up to where they're supposed to be, is $39 million, which is still a lot of money, and uh, they should not be unfunded, as we know that uh, Oakland County is, is uh, fully funded. Um, in Muskegon County, it's not $39 million. It's $110 million underfunded. And it's getting worse, by the way. Almost every single year, the numbers are, are worse. Matter of fact, uh, a month ago, uh, the the newspaper, the Chronicle, uh, reported after my complaint about the mess that we were in. Uh, one of the, uh, the department heads in in the county said, "Oh, uh, shortly this week, we expect the new numbers uh, on the pension funding, and we expect them to be quite good." Well, it's now been almost two months, <laughs> and we haven't heard from them. So they're probably uh, not quite good. They're, they're probably not as good as one would hope. No. Um, and uh, just to make it a little uh, more clear, uh, the uh, tax rate in Ottawa County is 3.6 mils. That's in and of itself doesn't mean much, but as a comparison, in Muskegon County, 5.6. So it's it's uh, more than 50 percent higher if you're a business owner to to uh, to in terms of county taxes than it is in Ottawa County. And not surprisingly, Ottawa County has about a 6.4 percent unemployment rate because employers are moving there and we have about an eight and a half percent uh employment rate because uh, employers are moving away from here and and the reason i i mention this is there was a a meeting um a closed meeting uh, just this uh, a couple days ago and i'll read it to you uh moved by derizinski supported by longmire to proceed to closed session for the purpose of collective bargaining negotiations and that meeting was uh, all of uh, uh about 10 minutes uh, secret meeting, nobody knows about it. But we did just uh, less than a year ago sign three, uh, or, uh, all 10 unions um, have signed three year contracts, which were extraordinarily, uh, you couldn't yeah. get these, these kind of jobs with benefits in the private sector. Uh, the very, very uh, plush contracts. Now, uh, only the unions, by the way, are, are asking to. Um, to reopen these negotiations. You can expect that they're going to slide in probably in their next meeting. There will be no county meeting, by the way, on Tuesday. There will be a meeting next Thursday. Uh, They'll probably slide in uh, something uh, uh, very fuzzy that the Chronicle will be complicit in uh, missing and uh, and will uh, or, or or report as oh this is really great which of course it's really great for the yeah. people getting the money, but when you have this kind of comparison that that. Uh, uh, Commissioner candidate Mark Molitor put together when we have 10 times the debt per resident. And by the way, that's $110 million. The jail is expected, this new jail that is definitely going to be uh, one way or the other, we're going to get a new jail. Uh, some of the cost uh, uh, estimates are up to $45 million. So we could increase our total indebtedness, which is already 10 times what it is in Ottawa County. We could increase that by almost 50% just with a, a snap of the fingers. And on that happy note, uh, we will take a break uh, and, and uh, p- uh, with, with, with bated breath await uh, uh, Scott Hagerstrom from Americans for Prosperity to talk about a big bridge that everybody says is free. Some people say it's not. Call 
Bad Boys Bell Bonds. Open 24-7, 365 days a year. Agents statewide and nationwide. We do 10% bonds for less. Call toll-free 866-728-6400. And remember, if we can't get you out, you ain't getting out. Payment plans available. Call now, 866-728-6400. Classic Computer Sales and Service. They buy, sell, trade, repair, and upgrade. New custom-built computers, three-year guarantee, excludes laptops. Or your computer tuned up with more memory, hard drive, or maybe a DVD burner installed for $49.95. Need cables, power supply, or get the computer built the way you want it. You can do it at Classic Computer in their new location, 1921 Apple Avenue, Sweet B. Call 773-5957. Classic Computer with hometown quality service. Make a run for the border. Taco Bell is waiting to cook for you. Delicious tacos, nachos, chalupas, gorditas, quesadillas, or try their famous grilled stuffed burrito for only $1.99. Make it a combo for only $3.49. Their large variety includes specialties, combos, supreme salads, and kids' meals. Taco Bell, the best fast food north of the border. So walk in or drive up. Visit all of the Taco Bells in West Michigan. Open Sunday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Taco Bells open Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 1 a.m. And we are back. The man who put the O in radio, Oscar Osbo, Tracy Lorenz, who's... Uh, we're gonna, talking I, about I, pancakes you may and not uh, even, yeah, flat. Yeah, we're really talking breakfast food here. Now we're moving on. And your host, Jim Riley. And we are waiting for um, Scott Hagerstrom from AFP, and uh, uh, hopefully he will call in. But until then, you know, it's something else I wanted to talk about. I think I'm three for three. I think he's been here, called in every time I've been here. Um, actually, I believe this is just his second time. He's talking. No, he was here last time I was here was in he? person, wasn't he? No, different guy. Different guy. Different guy. This is AFP. Sorry, Scott. Well, there's you know there there are a lot of uh, you know, you know the funny thing is there are a lot of conservative think tanks and I'm sure there's many many um, uh, liberal think tanks but there are quite a few in the state of Michigan who provide like um, the uh, uh, the Mackinac Center and the Thomas More. Um, association or something there's another one that does that that provide tremendous amounts of investigative research and uh it's uh sadly it it's a non-event when um the, when the 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 print media and most of the television radio media they for some reason are not interested in picking up on this occasionally you'll see a detroit news and and even more rarely you'll see the detroit free press pick up on a macono center item but uh, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, um, the the good stuff uh, we have to dig it out ourselves, and that's one of the things that's that help, helps keep our show going. So we do have quite a few uh, folks who do either call in or come in in person from the. Uh, I really want um, to know about that bridge too. Well, we're going to talk about the bridge in a second, and uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get get uh, with um, with Scott. But one thing I want to talk about that has something similar to do with the bridge, and and uh, I sort of got a, got a drifting as is my want in, in the, the last half hour. But um, the uh, there's a big discussion. The county had put together a, a, a vote where they decided to form a port authority um, for Muskegon County, and I went to one of the meetings and. Sat there, uh, and it was interesting that two folks uh, who never show up at any of these meetings, they were from, they were representing uh, various unions uh, who would, would have been involved in, in hiring people. And uh, uh, they were, of course, the only person from the, the citizenry, or, or even really from business uh, sitting in there, was, was me, uh, just videoing it. And, and I was able to ask a question. Because there were, there were there was discussion about well what, what are we going to do with unions and of course the the response was well, we're not going to offend anybody in the unions and we'll certainly make it union friendly and all that kind of thing, but I asked a question and shockingly they they answered it I said you know there's all this talk about uh, converting the Cobb plant when it's closed down uh, into a uh, county run uh, port authority with the with using those ports and 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 generally having a port authority over the entire. Uh, Muskegon Lake. I said, at some point, it's going to involve a significant amount of money. Um, what? Where is the evidence that there there is a need for additional port facilities? Because, of course, there is a port facility uh, uh, over at Sappy, which is privately owned. There's a, a, a very profitable port facility at um, 
the, the Mark Doc, uh, with multiple slips there. They these people employ people. They pay taxes. Um, they provide the service. Uh, when ships come into town, as we just learned from um, from uh, the Muskegon Chronicle and, and some of the local uh, uh, the television uh, in Grand Rapids, it's it's an unbelievable event. So so it's it's not like they're waiting out outside in Lake Michigan for a chance to to dock. And I said, what's the evidence that that we need? Um, more port facilities, and in particular, need one that would be run by the the Einsteins on the Muskegon <laughs> County <laughs> Board of Commissioners. Well, I mean, they yeah. haven't got a history uh, of of successful boom. running of, of of even governmental operations. I mean, as we just saw with comparisons between Muskegon and Ottawa County, but they most certainly have no um, success in terms of uh, running what would be considered a, a private operation. Um, I mean, even take a look at the bus, uh, the, the, the bus sit- situation, uh, in Muskegon Transit, take well, a look if, at if the... They ran it, if they ran it like it was their own business, they have some background and success that way, but they don't seem to do it that way. Uh, bingo, yeah, there we go. So anyway, and, and but the interesting thing was that I got a response. I got a response yeah. from the um, the chairman of the Public Works Board who was, who was involved in this, and he said... Um, hey, uh, you know, it, there's, there is a, there's going to be demand, and we have to be there to take care of the demand. And if we don't do it, nobody else will. And uh, I thought, oh, my gosh. Uh, the, the, again, didn't answer the question of is there a, a defined need. Uh, it was just an assumption that there was a, there was a need. There was an assumption that um, no one would fill it, that the, the, apparently the, the, the incompetence over at Mart Dock and, and, uh, and other places uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be able to take care of it, but only the Einsteins sitting there with their union friends uh, in, in the I Muskegon County. I see boats County. sunk. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. all blocked off with ships anyway, going down. Anyway, um, that's, that, that's where By we are covers. here at Muskegon. And we do, uh, we do have um, uh, Scott Hagerstrom from uh, Americans for Prosperity. Scott, are you on the line? I am on the line. Thank you for having me. There we go. Okay, good. Well, we'll keep you on a little bit longer if you don't mind, since we got a little uh, got a late start. Um, uh, uh, Scott, can you give a quick uh, uh, history, or at least a quick explanation of who 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 is uh, American for Prosperity? Americans. Sure, Americans for Prosperity is an organization that's dedicated to limited government and economic liberty. We're a grassroots organization, and uh, we uh, advocate for those issues that will bring. Uh, uh, prosperity to our country, and it was created back in 2004 in Washington, D.C., and uh, we have a little different philosophy. We actually have state-based chapters, and uh, the Michigan chapter was started in 2007, and uh, I'm a lifelong Michigan resident, um, uh, raising my family here, and uh, I want to see prosperity come back to Michigan, and we have over 76,000 activists here in Michigan, over 2.1 million nationwide, and uh, you know, I work in Lansing, but my goal is not to interact with legislators. My goal is to get citizens from around the state to uh, to have a say in their government. All too often, the lobbyists in Lansing are running things, and that's all legislators hear from. And it's our goal to have legis- uh, have citizens, the people that are out there working and raising families and paying the bills, to have a voice. And, and I go out there and train them. I give them education, and, and we encourage them to interact with legislators so that um, so that we have a prosperous future. And, of course, in Michigan, it's a very important topic because, as you know, we haven't had a lot of prosperity for the past uh, maybe going on 12 years now. Well, that's true, and, and uh, I know your interest uh, in, in making things better here from Michigan uh, it comes really from the from the conservative from the right side of the political spectrum, which is just wonderful. But you don't really hear lots of great ideas from the left, uh, other than you know, give us more money for government programs. But one of the a uh, big one here, which I think is almost uh, nonpartisan, uh, is uh, the building of a, a big old, brand new, not a big old, but a big brand new bridge um, from uh, Detroit over uh, to um, to Windsor, and there are a lot of. Uh, things I'd like to go after, but a quick question, and I, unfortunately I didn't have your phone number with me. Did you get a chance to take a look at the uh, Detroit Free Press uh, articles this morning? Uh, I did. I, didn't read them. I, I skimmed through it, and actually I, I uh, commented on, on the... I, I, well, I'm about finished writing a comment on the article, so so uh, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm sure I can... Uh, 
chime in. Well, if you read if you read it uh, almost across the board, it it says that the uh, the Maddie Maroon ads, uh, uh, Mr. Maroon is the gentleman who owns the the Ambassador Bridge. That the ads are misleading, um, and of course the uh, what do they call it the uh, the the truth tellers or the the, the, the fact checkers um, are saying that his his uh, ads are uh, not accurate, and yet, and, and interestingly, they they brought in three experts. They were all university professors. <laughs> so <it's>, yes. <laughs> they all, none of whom I, I suspect has ever had a real job, except maybe uh, when they were thirteen or fourteen. But um, uh, they all uh, 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 concur that that uh, the bridge would be free, and um, uh, the, the business. We know that the. Um, uh, the auto companies, all the big companies in the Detroit area, are saying that they would like to have this new bridge. Canada reiterates that it's going to be free. Um, uh, you folks have, um, you and Americans for Prosperity, have a particular point of view, and you've also done some research on it. So why don't you tell us, uh, if, if I am correct in assuming, that, that you think that the bridge, at least the the uh, um, constitutional amendment that will be voted on come November that we ought to vote against. We ought to vote. Well, we ought to vote for the constitutional amendment. Um, or, or maybe I'm wrong. Tell us about it. Let's get somebody who knows what he's talking about. Speak. <laughs> sure. There's several different issues here floating around. Uh, first, I'd like to say I I believe this this sort of is a partisan issue. Uh, when Governor Granholm proposed this, um, the Republicans in the legislature opposed it vehemently opposed it. Even Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly wrote uh, op that three times to the paper uh, opposing this. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, twice, 2005 and then uh, 2010, it could not get through uh, the Republican Senate because the Republicans were uh, adamantly opposed. And so here comes Governor Snyder, and he uh, blindsides everyone by pr- uh, pushing for the new bridge. And he uh, went to the legislature, which is overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly controlled by the Republicans. He couldn't get anyone even in the, the House, where they have 64 Republicans, to even introduce a bill to do what he wants to do, let alone take a vote. And the Senate, Senate Majority Leader Richard Bill, introduced a bill, and they couldn't even get the bill out of committee. That that bill died last October. And when you, re- when you look at the bill, there's no wonder. It, it allows the board members to have a conflict of interest. It, it's huge exemptions to the Freedom of Information Act. It allows the authority to hire union bosses as consultants. It says right in the bill that they can hire unions as consultants and require them to pay prevailing wage uh, on the project, which will increase costs drastically. Well, that bill couldn't even make it out of committee. Um, and so, really, Governor Snyder has been the only Republican that's really been out there vehemently um, in support of the bridge. Well, Scott, let me ask you a question. Uh, I think most people, if you could snap your fingers and say, uh, we're going to get a new bridge, Canada wants it, uh, certainly <laughs> businesses want it. If we got a new bridge and it was totally free, um, uh, or at least totally paid for by Canada, um, I, I think very few people yeah. would be against it. Of course, the Maroons would, because they, they would be having a competitor, and that's a legitimate argument there. But. Yep. Um, uh, the, w- what's the argument from you? Because we have these these three professors that the uh, the Detroit Free Press has brought up. They've yep. got this wonderful uh, graphic uh, talking about how great it is and how free it's going to be. Well, it's, it's it's semantics. Do you believe Michigan taxpayers are also federal taxpayers? Uh, because if this project is built, it will require hundreds of millions of dollars in federal money. Now, uh, where would that come? Where, where is that? Because I, I don't see. Uh, uh, other than for the customs, uh, it appears there's going to be no additional um, uh, federal money well, involved. Well, that's nothing to sneeze at. The customs uh, is estimated to cost between 250 and $550 million uh, just for the customs facility, and that's federal money. And uh, Michigan taxpayers are federal taxpayers. So then you have to operate the customs. The other issue is the Department of Transportation's, Michigan Department of Transportation's own study that shows that uh, Ambassador Bridge traffic will go down 70%, uh, approximately. Uh, between 15 and 20 percent traffic will be siphoned off from the Blue Huron, uh, 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 Blue Water Bridge up in uh, Port Huron, and and 15 to 20 percent of the traffic will be siphoned off from the tunnel. Now those are taxpayer entities, and those barely operate. They don't make a profit. So any traffic you take from them will have to. Uh, the state of Michigan taxpayers will have to subsidize those operations. Let me ask you a question here: uh, the the Ambassador Bridge is not taxpayer owned. Is that correct? 
No, no. Okay. So, the, the so, sign on the blue wire. Oh, okay. So you'd, you'd be taking away traffic from two and putting it in another taxpayer-owned. Um, uh, but, but in fact, you would also take away a significant amount of uh, traffic from the, the, the uh, privately owned Ambassador Bridge. Right. Now, he, uh, the, the, the people who own the Ambassador Bridge, given that it's privately owned, uh, they, in fact, uh, pay taxes. Is that correct? They do. They pay property taxes. The people they employ pay income taxes. Um, so there's there's a lot of operations there that are paying taxes into the system. So those would go down if they lost business, right? Uh, exactly. Okay. And and you know we're we're looking at this I think sort of backward. Okay. Um, we have a bridge that was built in the 1920s with private funds. It's always been privately owned. In the late 1970s, uh, the current owner uh, bought a controlling interest from Warren Buffett. Who was the controlling interest at that time? And they have won awards. They know how to operate bridges. And basically, what we what we want to do is why don't we emulate what they've done? Why don't we do what we did in the twenties and we go to Congress and seek a franchise uh, approval for a franchise and put that franchise out to bid to the highest bidder and let another bridge be built, but through the private sector. You know, instead of shutting down privately owned bridge, let's emulate what they did, and let's have more private infrastructure operated in this country. That's what they're doing in other states. Um, instead, you know, the governor wants to, he says, you know, this is, this is going to be privately built. Well, then why do we need so many government entities involved in this process? Uh, I, I'm not sure what you mean. You say he says it's going to be privately built. I, I, I missed that. Well, they, they want to have it both ways. They want to build. They want to create an authority, and then they're going to contract out to a private company to come in and build the bridge and operate it. So, so he he, he says, he, he, depending on what crowd the governor's speaking to, he'll say, "Well, this is a public bridge." And then if it's a different crowd where he's talking to more conservative audience, he'll say that it's it's going to be built by a private company. And well, operated the, oh, by a private uh, company. Okay, so some of the benefits, though, I mean, if you're going to build, for instance, the I-75 hookup, if you're going to build the U.S. Customs Plaza, and if you're going to build the bridge, um, the private companies are, are going to be involved in, in those construction jobs. Let me ask you this. If, uh, if Canada is paying for the bridge, uh, they're going to pick who the construction companies are, for, at least for the bridge, right? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, they're paying the bill. They're going to have to say in, in who the who the entities are that are coming in and, uh, and building and, and operating the bridge, most definitely. And, and, of course, it's very likely, given the politics involved in a billion dollars on a bridge, that it's going to be not American uh, companies. Since they're paying for it, it'll be companies that are headquartered in Canada, I would imagine, right? Correct, correct. One other point is uh, Randy Richardville, who introduced the bill in the Senate last year, after the bill is defeated, went on WJR and admitted that there's no way to guarantee that Michigan taxpayers won't get the bill because unless we have a constitutional amendment, future legislatures may put money into this project. There's no controlling them. And that's exactly what happened with the Mackinac Bridge. They said that wouldn't cost a nickel, and years later the legislature had to go in and bail it out. Uh, I'm not, uh, that's news to me. Tell me a little more about that. Well, when that was proposed, the governor at that time said it wouldn't cost a nickel and uh, the tolls would pay for it. And and it turned out that the tolls wouldn't co- didn't cover it, so the legislature had to appropriate money uh, to bail it out. In fact, if you look at the 1963 Constitution, uh, there's a provision in there that says, with a supermajority vote of the legislature, that they can assume the Mackinac Bridge Authority debt, and that's exactly what they did. How long after the bridge was built did this uh, assumption of debt happen? Uh, well, it was nineteen. It was nineteen sixty-three when they put that provision in the state constitution. Uh, so, um, I, you know, I, I don't remember the exact year that it was built. Okay, it was, it was a few years. But but if they if they want to stick the taxpayers with any bill, it's it, there's always a way to do it. Well, there, there's another issue that that uh, comes up to me, and I, I'm looking at this. Uh, I, I would suggest that anybody uh, who's interested in this issue take a look at the uh, Detroit Free Press. It's a, their links on their front page of their uh, of their website, and and do view it with the idea that it's it does appear to have a, a bias uh, in terms of the way it's put together. But one thing I noticed that it does not mention at all, and this had been the, uh, the issue that was very important to uh, Senator Hansen when we spoke with him, who was our state senator out here. And uh, there is going to be um, 
uh, it, it's in negotiations, I would imagine, but something that's called community benefits. And community benefits are essentially a slush fund um, that is given uh, to some communities when eminent domain is uh, utilized to come into a town and put a, a highway in or whatever. And, and it's, uh, it, the initial intent was to compensate people. If, if they're going to put a highway in and you're going to take your house down, well, I have to pay you for the house. But apparently in, in some of these negotiations for community benefits, there have been um, experts, uh, you know, saying, well, wait a minute, there are emotional uh, losses, there are, uh, this is going to affect a minority neighborhood more so than a white neighborhood, so there's civil rights issues, and there's any number of other things that, that are going to be brought up. So in other words, uh, with all of these costs that the Free Press uh, outlines in, in very point, you know, decimal percentages, um, they don't make any mention of this cost uh, for community benefits, which I understand, if there are to be any, are going to be borne by um, of the United States, and I would imagine by Michigan taxpayers. Can you extrapolate on that a little bit? Certainly. Uh, the chair of appropriation, Senator Kahn, came out and, and said that the cost of community benefits could run as high as $200 million. They're uh, typically up to 10% of the cost of a project. And the governor has promised that there will be community benefits paid. And uh, they sort of play a shell game. They say, well, the company that's coming in to build it will pay the community benefits. Well, that increases the, the cost of the project. So the bottom line is there will be community benefits if this project goes forward, and um, and it is a slush fund. Uh, you know, I have high praise for Senator Hansen for standing up, standing, uh, you know, it's he stood up against the governor of his own party, and that's what he's supposed to do to represent. He truly was representative of the people in his district and asking these hard questions. And uh, um, let's look at the, the homes in that area. Let me give you an example of where community benefits would come in. There's homes in that neighborhood for sales between three and five thousand dollars, and so under the state constitution, when eminent domain is used uh, by the state of Michigan to take those homes to build this project, they can get no more than 125 percent value of their home. Mm. You know, obviously, if you if you buy a home for a few thousand dollars, uh, that's not enough money to move into another new home, and so that's where community benefits will come in, so that these people can can move um, and, and buy another home. And, uh, well, that and makes sense, though. That that does make sense. Um, I think. I mean, it's we don't want to be going in, uh, uh, you know, using eminent eminent domain and and taking people out of their homes. Uh, uh, so that's where we get the two hundred million dollars. Well, that's that's part of it. But the question is, are you going to give them uh, the one hundred twenty five percent of their cost of their home, or are you going to move them into a hundred thousand dollars new home? Oh, uh, um, are you going to build? Uh, uh, what are you? It's going to be right next to a middle school. They're they're talking about um, putting in new facilities for the middle school. You know, these things are all nice. I want people to live in a nice home. I want people to to have a nice neighborhood. But you got to realize that's redistribution of wealth. You have to take that from somewhere else in the economy, from other people, from other taxpayers to fund that. Let me and let me well, let me go back on this because you, you said something earlier again, and I would like to just uh, hopefully I'm, I'm correctly stating Senator Hansen's point of view here. He's not anti-bridge; he's anti-voting for a bridge as long as uh, the multi hundreds of millions of dollars questions are not answered. Uh, he, he's I think he's probably like I am in that if the bridge was totally free, he would be for it. But you said something um, earlier that it, the community benefits might be in the neighborhood of two hundred million dollars, but in fact the bridge builder would have to assume those costs. Now, according to the Detroit Free Press's graphic, it's about $950 million is what the cost of the bridge is. Do you know offhand, Does is that cost including the community benefits? Number two, would it be additional to the community benefits? And if, in fact, it is additional to, uh, would Canada pick those benefits up? Has that question been resolved? Uh, no, that. None of those questions have been um, resolved. In fact, there's a lot of figures flying around out there. Um, the $950 million is actually just for the bridge. That doesn't include any of the ancillary projects, the, the, uh, the landing uh, on the American side, the connectors I-75, the Customs Plaza. That does not include community benefits. Uh, there's a lot of unknown questions, and in fact, when you look at the agreement between the U.S. and Canada, or between Michigan and Canada, uh, it's pretty much a, a PR document, um, and uh, it, it, its enforceability is really in question. 
Um, what about the Canadian side, though? Would the Canadian side have the same? Well, it, according, I'm looking at this graphic. Like I say, it's a really great graphic, at least for, for those who, who like the bill. But according to the graphic, there are five major issues. The um, the Windsor uh, connection uh, picked up by Canada. The Canadians' customs picked up by Canada. The bridge, according to this, would be um, picked up by Canada but paid for by tolls, which makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, then the customs uh, plaza, where Canada would pick up part of it, but the United States would pick up about $263 million. And then the I-7. 75 hookup where they say uh, Canada has stepped in and accepted the cost. Now, that you know what, what what kind of gets my antenna tweaking here is it doesn't say as it does on others who pays Canada. Uh, it, it says Canada stepped in and accepted the cost. That seems like it's likely in in the current um, uh, verbiage of, of whatever this agreement is is a little fuzzy there. Am I right in that reading? You're correct in that reading, yes. yes. Okay. Um, well, okay, well, look, so it, it would seem to me that, oh, by the way, there's another um, a wonderful uh, 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 graphic that you have on your Americans for Prosperity page, uh, which talks, which shows the um, the number of uh, users that are going across the various bridges, and uh, it truly is down significantly. Um, Scott, can we, can we hold you over uh, from the break and come on back? Oh, sure, that would be great. Looking great. forward to it. We'll take a break, and we will be back at Muskegon's Eye on Muskegon. Make a run for the border. Taco Bell is waiting to cook for you. Delicious tacos, nachos, chalupas, gorditas, quesadillas, or try their famous grilled stuffed burrito for only $1.99. Make it a combo for only $3.49. Their large variety includes specialties, combos, supreme salads, and kids' meals. Taco Bell, the best fast food north of the border. So walk in or drive up. Visit all of the Taco Bells in West Michigan. Open Sunday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Taco Bells open Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 1 a.m. Call Bad Boys Bell Bonds. Open 24-7, 365 days a year. Agents statewide and nationwide. We do 10% bonds for less. Call toll-free 866-728-6400. And remember, if we can't get you out, you ain't getting out. Payment plans available. Call now, 866-728-6400. Classic Computer Sales and Service. They buy, sell, trade, repair, and upgrade. New custom-built computers, three-year guarantee, excludes laptops. Or your computer tuned up with more memory, hard drive, or maybe a DVD burner installed for $49.95. Need cables, power supply, or get the computer built the way you want it. You can do it at Classic Computer in their new location, 1921 Apple Avenue, Suite B. Call 773-5957. Classic Computer with hometown quality service. Every pocket of your clothes, those uh, dad gummers, uh, are interested in inserting their hands. I imagine they probably, uh, those who are dexterous with their toes, would probably stick their feet in your pockets, too, if they could get more of your money. Uh, these days, with electronic uh, transfers, though, they are, they're far more efficient uh, than simply coming to your house and going into your pants. But we have with us at Ion Muskegon. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. We are back at IM Muskegon, and we're talking with Americans for Prosperity's um, Scott Hagerstrom, and we are talking about the, the bridge. And if I could, uh, I, I, I would agree with you, Scott, that there are still very significant questions about the bridge, and I'd like to come back to it. But could you just clarify what it is that we in Michigan will be voting on come November, uh, because there is a um, a constitutional amendment that you folks, or not you folks, but the folks that support the bridge uh, have put on the ballot. There are going to be six total um, initiatives, I guess you'd call them. And uh, can you explain what it is we're voting and how we might vote if we were for or against this this uh, bridge? Sure. Really, the, the ballot question is completely different. Whether you support or oppose the bridge, uh, you may support the ballot initiative. All the ballot initiative says is that should the people decide whether a bridge gets built? We've heard a lot of arguments from the governor, whether it be Governor Reinholm or now Governor Snyder, and we've heard a lot of arguments from the bridge company, and we've heard a lot of chatter through the media on this issue. And uh, sometimes it is hard to decide who's right, who's wrong, who's lying, who's telling the truth. And so all this says is that if they want to build a new international bridge, a very significant project, they'll have to come to the people for approval. And so what we're finding is even people that support the bridge support this because they want to have a voice and whether a bridge gets built. So a yes vote 
says you want the people to decide whether a bridge is built, built. A no vote says you're okay with um, the governor going around the legislature and just unilaterally deciding to build a multi-billion dollar project. Well, you know, the, what I find interesting is that uh, we do have a system where the people do elect representatives to do the, the, the tough work to read the details and the fine print and then ultimately vote, uh, hopefully, with, uh, with input from their constituents. And in fact, uh, the, the votes have been done. There have been more than one. And the votes have been, no, we don't want to go along with whatever this particular agreement is. It's not anti-bridge, but it's anti-this particular agreement. And um, that being the case, uh, uh, having the, the individual voters vote on it seems to me to be a really benign kind of a thing. But in fact, uh, certainly the, the, the Democrats, uh, the Democrat Party, uh, as we know, the, uh, the uh, education establishment, establishment seems to be uh, against uh, citizen input here and, uh, and many others. Um, uh, they they do not want the citizens to have a, a say in this, even though their representatives have already had a say, and now that's been that's been yanked away from them. Um, what does that say about those the people who are supporting this initiative? This this well, actually, actually it's a constitutional amendment, right? It, it is a constitutional amendment, and uh, the fact is, our the Michigan Constitution in 1963 gave the, the citizens the right to collect signatures um, and put amendments. Uh, before the people of Michigan. So uh, we do have a representative government, and the governor basically ignored your elected representatives and in, in, in sort of a bullheaded way is just plowing forward and spending a lot of time and energy on this issue. And, uh, you know, that is interesting that a lot of groups, I, I don't see where we can go wrong in asking the people. I may not always agree with what the people say, but this the, uh, the people, the power of this country, the power of the people in the state is vested first in the people, and to let them have a say is, I, I, I think, the right thing to do. Well, uh, one of the things that has been brought up also is that it, this doesn't even matter, um, because the governor has the, the power and the authority to go ahead with this agreement, and even if this, uh, this constitutional amendment uh, is passed, uh, it'll be a never mind because they're already going ahead and this will not uh, be able to supersede the governor's power. That's an interesting legal question, and that's what the governor's office continues to say, but um, that remains to be seen. On one hand, they're saying that this doesn't matter, but then on the other hand, they said that Lieutenant Governor Kelly would be spending most of his time this fall, uh, almost every day, in fact, out there um, campaigning against this amendment. So on one hand, they're saying it won't matter, but then on the other hand, they're spending a lot of time and energy trying to defeat it. So their actions and their words really don't match up. Okay, so if this if this did pass, then we're going to see uh, a, 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 probably a large amount of legal uh, battle going on. Um, who knows? Maybe all the way up to the uh, the United States Supreme Court. So this, no matter what happens with this uh, the referendum, um, uh, it, it isn't over till it's over, right? <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah, it 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 will be something that continues whether it passes or doesn't pass. Uh, I guess the basic question I, I believe citizens need to ask themselves is, do they believe they should have a say, a vote, on whether um, an international bridge is built, a uh, piece of multi-billion dollar infrastructure? Um, Tracy had a comment um, earlier about some of the businesses in, the, in, the, uh, in, in Canada that might be severely impacted by this. Uh, like uh, cheetahs and some of the other... Are they? Could, um, could we possibly get those girls to work at customs? <laughs> the little, the little frisking. You know, there's other ballot issues too on the ballot, and one particular important. <laughs> Moving right to, along to uh, to Michigan to to Michigan is, is uh, Proposal Five, which would require a two thirds majority in the legislature uh, to raise uh, taxes, and that's something that Americans for Prosperity is a hundred percent behind. Uh, Fifteen other states have a supermajority requirements. And simply it just says if, if you believe it should be harder for legislators to take your hard-earned money, uh, then you would support Proposal 5. And, and can, explain that a little bit more. It's a, it's a supermajority, two-thirds majority in, in the elected state house and state senate? 
It is. And we actually, what surprises people, we already have this provision several times in the Constitution. I mentioned earlier with the Mackinac Bridge Authority that it requires a supermajority in okay. that. Uh, and part of Proposal A, it re- requires a supermajority of the legislature if they want to raise our state education property taxes. It requires a supermajority to give a bill's immediate effect. It requires a supermajority to put questions before the citizens' uh, constitutional changes. It requires a supermajority if they want to declare an emergency to bypass Headley provisions. So this is something well established in the Michigan Constitution. It's something 15 other states have. And it also says if the legislature can't get a supermajority to raise taxes, then they simply just go to the people and ask the people's permission. Now, a lot of people say, well, this is radical. It's going to hurt Michigan. It's not radical. It doesn't lower one tax. All it says is the legislature wants to take more of your money, then they need a supermajority. Or they just simply ask the people that are going to be paying the bill, the voters, whether they want to pay higher taxes. And the governor and the Michigan Chamber of Commerce are opposed to this, as with as are many other Lansing organizations that feed off of taxpayer dollars. Why would the Chamber of Commerce be against this? The Chamber and the Governor want a gas tax increase. Uh, we already have the fifth highest gas tax on gasoline <laughs> oh, please, in the country, please, no. and they w- they want to raise tax. They want to raise the, the tax on gasoline um, and assess new fees that will come to about one point four billion, and it will give Michigan immediately the second highest tax on gasoline and lead and and. What this legislation will do will put automatic increases in the gas tax in the future, so eventually Michigan will have the highest tax on gasoline in the country. And, uh, wow, now I had not heard that put together here. So so really, it's, it's a one-issue uh, item, at least the one issue that's coming up the, the closest on, on the, the, in the future. Um, but again, why would the, Mis- the Michigan Chamber of Commerce be for this? For a gas tax, tax increase? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they believe we need to put more money into roads, and that we the uh, the way to do that is to take more money uh, from the public. Now, AFP believes we need to put more money into roads, but we differ on where that money should come from. We believe roads are important, and there need to be some reforms in the way the current money is spent. But additional resources probably will be needed. However, we believe government already collects enough of our money. It's up to our well-paid legislators and our governor to make priorities and. Uh, the, the legislature's the budget starting October 1st is going to be $1.6 billion higher than the 2012 budget. So there are there is money there. They're collecting additional revenues. They just need to make priorities and, and put the money where, where they believe it should go. And if they believe roads should be a priority, they need to take current tax dollars uh, and, and put those into roads and to find efficiencies and cut other areas areas of government. Or they could get a supermajority, or they could bring it to the people again for a vote and say, wait a minute, you know, if you want the roads to go, let's bump up your uh, your uh, sales tax. Well, I didn't realize that, and I appreciate uh, we're running a little bit out of time here, but um, you guys uh, keep up the good work, keep us informed. Um, uh, I would like to see, uh, frankly, I'd like to see a little more discussion about um, expanding the uh, the customs area at the Blue Water Bridge. I, I don't, I've never been over the Ambassador Bridge myself, but the Blue Water Bridge uh, is is a huge backup coming into the United States. So we could probably quintuple the amount of uh, traffic on that bridge simply by uh, by expanding the uh, the customs side, at least on the American side. The question. Right. Studies have said that's also the issue at the Ambassador Bridge, that it's not really about um, the, the, the lane traffic, it's about customs. Yeah. Here's, yeah, here's the, a customs tip. If they ever ask you, do you have any guns, don't say, what do you need? <laughs> <laughs> it, it slows things down considerably. I, I would imagine. I would imagine. The, the question I had, what was about Canada, though? What, what does Canada think of all this? I mean, was Canada Canada's 100% for this? Do they have any? Oh, that's a, yeah. Is there any, is there any uh, blowback from the Canadians who are going to be you know, pegging out well over, well, it looks like almost uh, $2 billion. Yeah, what do they say? Well, it's interesting. There is the, the, it's an interesting group of individuals because the, the Canadian version of the Huffington Post actually came out with a scathing article just recently on the Canadian government for, for throwing so many tax dollars at this project and assuming so much. So, um, so the Canadian government, as of now, is fully behind this project, uh, and they were quoted on the, the two years ago, is saying that it will not cost Canadian taxpayers one dime. 
So no one's paying for this. It's great. It's free to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe wow. it's in the stash. The president's got this uh, this legendary stash. Perhaps that's it. Well, Scott, hey, thank you very, very much. Um, uh, keep up the good work. Uh, keep us informed. Um, I, maybe we will get a chance to talk to you before the election, certainly after the election. So have a great Sunday, and uh, we will uh, be back with Eye on Muskegon. Great. Thank you. Call Bad Boys Bell Bonds. Open 24-7, 365 days a year. Agents statewide and nationwide. We do 10% bonds for less. Call toll-free 866-728-6400. And remember, if we can't get you out, you ain't getting out. Payment plans available. Call now, 866-728-6400. Classic Computer Sales and Service. They buy, sell, trade, repair, and upgrade. New custom-built computers, three-year guarantee, excludes laptops. Or your computer tuned up with more memory, hard drive, or maybe a DVD burner installed for $49.95. Need cables, power supply, or get the computer built the way you want it. You can do it at Classic Computer in their new location, 1921 Apple Avenue, Sweet B. Call 773-5957. Classic Computer with hometown quality service. Dead gum government, you sorry so and so's. You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. Where you dead gum? Dead gum government. Well, and they they get up earlier than we do generally, <laughs> but we uh, we do get up early on Sunday mornings at Ion Muskegon, and we're going to try to give you some information and, and help you have get the tools. And, and as we just heard from that ad, maybe maybe you need a gun every once in a while. And I, I saw that, I, I think it was in uh, someplace <laughs> in the United States. Every, everyone's well, going to have one of these. We're going to be the wild, wild well, west soon anyway. Apparently so. the police just, just killed a double amputee a gentleman sitting in his wheelchair. I th- that might have been in D.C., but... Uh, uh, who knows, perhaps he was locked and loaded and deserved what he got. But uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, one person off of Medicare reducing the ultimate <laughs> debt to the, oh the younger generations. <laughs> so, so some, so, some people will be happy with that. So, so the bridge thing, really, they, they really, we really don't know about the, Can- the Canadians, what they're saying. They're just kind of saying, hey, yay, hey, it's going to be a good um, thing, eh? You know, it, it, nobody. It doesn't cost anybody anything. It's Amazing. interesting. I suspect that it's not a big issue uh, to, to most of the Canadian citizenry. Certainly, it, it as as Tracy so uh, insightfully um, <laughs> suggested that there are very specific uh, companies uh, within Windsor that might be interested. And I like your idea. Uh, certainly, if you're going to be uh, waiting in a long line uh, on a bridge or a tunnel to get through customs, if you could take some of these uh, young ladies uh, who've obviously interested in, in uh, uh, First Lady Obama's um, fitness uh, right. regimes, um, get some of them helping out <laughs> with... Uh, Risky. With uh, yeah, what happened to the ladies from Hooters over here in Muskegon? We could send That's them right. over there, and, too. And, yeah. and, and, and <laughs> no. Since we don't have our Hooters any longer, <laughs> yeah. uh, they, there's an wow. opportunity for them to get a job in the, in, in the Detroit area where they do need jobs. So, well, I don't know if it's been discussed as a possible... If you want to make this more money for Michigan, can't they just make the bridge one way? <laughs> it, they would cut, it would cut construction costs in half. All right, there you go. You only need one lane and, and just have the people well, that, come over and they can't get back. That's been the way the state will be. And, Keep our money. and once we get to be, uh, we move up from number five to number one in, in terms of the most expensive gasoline in the country, uh, that might be the idea. So we could save a couple billion dollars, certainly save the Canadians a couple billion dollars that they could use. We'll have to, to save come money over here. To, to buy the Volt. Yeah, if this happens. Oh, my I, golly. I tell you what, we'll have to all buy the Volt. Did you hear? Did yeah, you hear this the, is an over shut till- down the cop plant. Yeah. Well, the electricity costs more. Right. It's well, it's, going. it is. It That's is true. a little yeah. frightening. Um, so, did you so hear this? The, isn't over until Aretha Franklin sings. Well, it isn't going to be over until yes, without any question, it's not over until the 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 judges, and that's why these Supreme Court uh, judge races are now becoming more and more important. And I didn't realize that one of the reasons behind this push for the. Uh, uh, against the the uh, supermajority to raise taxes was because we've got coming right down our neck this uh, this increase on on sales taxes and gasoline taxes. So, um, mm. uh, folks, if you like higher taxes, uh, there's certainly opportunity out there to stay home, don't vote uh, come November, and um, 
Start saving uh, for the vault. And and start saving for the vault, which... <laughs> of course, uh, like you say, won't be able to afford that because the, the electri- electricity will be gone, yeah. too. So. Well, actually, you know, if you go to places like like uh, Muskegon County Building, where the, they have the free uh, plug-ins, which were, my understanding is between ten and $20,000 yeah. per plug-in. And the one at Pier, wow. Pier Marquette. And that's, they got a couple of Pier full. Marquette, and they're all over. So, yeah, there's. let's face it, uh, the people are... I tried um, to plug my iPod in at <laughs> Pier Marquette, and... Well, it's probably up, you? you'd probably yeah. get arrested. Uh, yeah. Hey, on the good news thing, though, um, our, never let it be said that the Michigan State uh, Legislature um, is uh, is is really looking out for you. And they just uh, there's a bill that's just worked its way through the Senate last month, and uh, um, pretty soon. Uh, in Michigan, if you win one of these big lotteries, your name doesn't have to be public, which I think is actually a good idea. But the cool thing about that is, or actually the downside of it is, if we had that, if that was already law, this gentleman, um, Donald Lawson, um, you know Donald? The 55-year-old uh, father of two and self, self-described hillbilly from Lapeer, um, who just won uh, $337 million uh, in, the, in the most recent uh, mega... Um, mega uh, uh, lottery, um, the poor fella is now advertising on uh, Facebook or Craigslist or someplace, at least on the Internet, for a girlfriend. I'm, and, I'm thinking about it. And, well, <laughs> you know what? Seven million. I, I'm, I, I think that if, in fact, if, he in just, fact, you... You had this, had the 330, it'd be a little different. This poor guy, he seems like a very nice and and certainly a very naive guy. Um, It was Powerball that he won. But um, here's the way uh, one of the the media, uh, well, apparently this is his self-described deal at at Match.com. Quote, tall Mexican who loves yo, women, to have a good time with me, anything they want, I'm, I'm up for it, so try me. You never know what we can do. What else? I like to please a woman any way she wants, and that's all that matters. What she wants, she gets. That's plagiarism. He took that right off Oscars. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was right <laughs> off my. Yeah. Yeah. So well, what what I said, yeah. that's certainly what I whisper to Honey Bunch uh, uh, quite on. often. It, it all it, it, the guy. It, it really is a well, very look at effective. Nicole Smith. I mean, look at that that eggplant she married. I mean, it's money. Yeah, and 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 so thankfully we do have now the government setting in, uh, stepping up and and uh, protecting these folks from think themselves. Because think of all the calls you get and stuff. I mean, I I have no problem with that. Well, there is that song, you know, "Call Me Maybe," which is a wonderful little tune. You know, wait a minute, that's the song. Yeah. That's the song from the video, the Michigan oh. video. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, let's see. I, I, wow. S- since we got a thousand people listening to 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 this uh, this show, I think we should. That's have households, a, not people. Well, there you That's go. Households. You right. should have Tracy they bring his book around. in here for a book signing after the show. Oh golly, yes. I wanted to talk about that, Tracy. You are. You do have a new book out, and book. Uh, let's talk about that. All thousand of you, come over here. I'll sign your book for you. <laughs> well, I can't because it's just an ebook right now. <laughs> well, you can do I it. Can, in, yeah, yeah. I, I can sign on any other. Uh, parts that you want but i, I can't well, how do we about, get the, tell us about the book Tracy, and how do people get it it's on uh, amazon.com it's on barnesandnoble.com and if you want to download it to your phone or your computer or anywhere else it's on uh, fastpencil.com Ooh, very so those are your three your three shots at getting this book all right, and and but one more time, if you're go, if you're on Amazon, let's say right, just, uh, just what do you Google? Just Tracy put, Lorenz. Tracy Lorenz. I okay. gotta do. Pops well, that's very cool. Yeah. Hey, what kind of response have you gotten from it? Uh, so far, uh, it's going very well because it's only four bucks, three ninety nine. Wow. Okay. So I can afford uh, that. Yeah. Well, I think that's good. And what's in it? What, okay. Why would I pay for my, pay my three ninety nine? Uh, these are all columns that uh, never appeared in the Chronicle. And they are unedited, so it's, uh, uh, as I walked around town, there were so many people who would mention that they missed my fabulous column and stuff, and I would tell them, but it's still out there, it's just not in the Chronicles and other papers around West Michigan. And because you still are, a, now you are a syndicated columnist, among other things, you run your businesses, but That's you are a syndicated right. columnist at, in the, uh, the, the, uh, the West Examiner. Michigan area. Oh, and great. Examiner amongst other, yeah, locally, the Examiner, and... Uh, I don't know how far the listening area is, so I'll just say the examiner, which right, is owned well, by uh, Detroit yeah, Legal News. And you can pick that up uh, any place. Um, yes. Okay, good. Well, I think that's great. That's another entrepreneur dealing with the Internet, that's getting right. your uh, your product out through the world. Uh, anybody can pick it up. Through the world. Place. I think that's really I'm neat. huge in Denmark. 
Hey, um, I want to. I want to. Speaking of Denmark, I was always big in France, but yeah, <laughs> there's there's something uh, uh, smelly and something smells in Denmark. Um, this is an awful thing. We we know about, uh, of course, the 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 hideous uh, um, assassination of, of our ambassador in in Libya, which is the first uh, the, amb- the first ambassador uh, killed um, since Jimmy Carter was in charge of the uh, uh, our foreign policy, and and I think it's. Uh, it's not a surprise that the next time that happened, it was under the foreign policy of, of uh, Barack Obama. But one thing that was absolutely, totally left out of the uh, the, the news media, and you can be sure that if, if uh, a Republican, certainly if, if President Romney uh, was, was in charge, you'd know about it. But eight irreplaceable um, Harrier aircraft at, at a cost of almost $200 million uh, were destroyed uh, in an attack um, just this past week, uh, this was in Afghanistan. You may have heard of the attack, and of course, a, a lieutenant colonel who was the squadron leader um, was killed. But two hundred million dollars. By the way, this is the worst. Is that each or is that total? Uh, no, they're they're about uh, thirty to thirty-five million dollars each. Wow. Um, I paid forty-two and, for mine. And uh, and, and of course, this is this is just by the way, just just the aircraft. I mean, the, there was a very significant attack which we were not prepared for. It killed a, a variety of, of of Americans, and it it it, it also, uh, of course, cost the, cost us these these Harriers, which are no longer in production. But this is the worst air power loss in the United States since Vietnam. And what country was this in? Now uh, this was in, I believe, it was in Afghanistan. Kind of ironic, this Harrier. Uh, well, <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I think that I, I don't want to make make fun of this because I, th- this is an awful situation. Um, Nobody the, in the country the knows anything about this because the American media absolutely buried it. I never heard of it. And and of course uh, now we have uh, not only not only have we lost the planes and we've lost the men. Now they're they're talk. Uh, you know, universally, uh, internationally, that, but we, that we, we need we lose to pull all, the, all the planes. Though I, I'd say I didn't hear it either. Well, no, uh, they. Um, I'm not sure how many they've got uh, remaining. There, it's it was most of the planes there. And the worst thing about were they it on was, the ground. Then they were shot on the yeah, ground. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, okay. they were. They were. They were attacked using some type of artillery. Okay, but. Um, they uh, well, no, it wasn't just artillery. They they actually a significant in, number of of. Uh, uh, Terrorists were able to get over stuck, the stuck fence bombs under the wings or something and, like and that. And they had well, they had RPGs and yeah. things of that sort. Oh, okay. But these were also the the most recent variant. Uh, so in other words, these are these are the best uh, best planes that they had. So uh, you know, I don't want to make a big deal about it in in the sense that uh, you know, war is awful. We're losing people all the time. Um, but we we know that every single night. Uh, certainly, under when George Bush was president, we we had a you know recounting of the number of dead and and everything else. We're not seeing that from the media. They don't. It doesn't seem like it matters any longer. I, I saw think it's, last I think night that awful. in that there's been two thousand soldiers so far killed in Afghanistan. <laughs> And during the same period of time, there's been five thousand people murdered in Chicago. Well, it's like it's it's, it's yeah. a, it's a very it, it's a terrible situation, yeah. and uh, we of course we're running out of time here. Um, thanks uh, thanks to Oscar and Tracy and uh, the the good folks Thank Scott Hagerstrom at AFP. Keep up the good work. Well, we're going to try to keep you informed. Uh, lots of stuff happening. Uh, we've got a, this big county commission meeting coming up. Uh, uh, on Thursday, I'll be at Carmen's. Please, uh, if you're interested in talking about anything politically wise, uh, Carmen's, not Tuesday this week, but Thursday from 2 to about 3.15, I'll be there. And, of course, we're on TV, TV38. Um, we um, we are getting to the folks here at Muskegon. We're getting the word out. We're going to continue to do it next week. I am Muskegon. will be the back. Well. We're going to continue our quest. Hey, guys, we want to expose what, what the power people in town do not want you to know i hope you have all uh, just a great week in our little piece of heaven next week we'll put the eye on you muskegon